All 98 7. Uh, my level of excitement is about 97% right now because sitting next to me, Ezri Koenig from uh, the band Vampire Weekend. Dude, it's good to see you. Likewise. Uh, it has been many, many years, and uh, my guess is that's going to be a, uh, a talking point as you continue to uh, talk about this new music that's coming. It comes up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's been a little while for you guys, for sure. Um, let's start with an Instagram post that came from you uh, a couple yeah. of weeks ago. It had a file folder uh -huh. uh, that had the uh, initials FOTB on it. That's right. Are we prepared to say what FOTB is at this point? Father of the Bride. Father of the Bride. Very nice. <laughs> um, there was a lot of speculation. There's a lot of guesswork on kind of what that could be. Um, anybody come close? Did anybody guess it? I, I was just kind of like, just not ready to tell everybody the title yet. Uh huh. But it really turned into this thing with our fans going crazy guessing. Sure. And I, not only did some people guess it, I think like a lot did. Uh huh. But, and then there, and some people were really confident. They're like, I know it's Father of the Bride. But then there were so many other fun guesses that all got kind of got drowned out. And I was I was going to ask that. What was the best non album title that uh, someone guessed? You're like, man, maybe that should have been it. I mean, there, there's so I, there's so many good ones. Okay, one that kind of blew my mind a little bit was we have uh, on CT's bass drum that we toured with last summer. Uh -huh. We put a frog, uh -huh. and that's kind of part part of the album imagery. So some people were like, "Is it frog on the bass drum?" And I was like, "Looked at it and I was like, damn, that actually makes sense." It totally does. And then yeah. just people, had, just all these, I don't know, fall of the Babylonians. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> That wouldn't be crazy for a Vampire Weekend yeah. album, but yeah, there's a lot of good guesses. Um, we mentioned the time. It has been six years. Yeah. Uh, this batch of songs, was it written over the span of those six years, or did you have like a burst of creativity uh, a couple of months ago, and now we have an album? There, there's always on some of our albums like certain songs that have really deep roots, mm -hmm. just because like I'm always writing songs here and there, and then sometimes you have a good idea, and you're like, it just doesn't belong on this album. So some have deep roots, but... Really, like the hardcore process of like writing and recording every day, only started a few years ago. So it, it wasn't like just like six years in the studio every day. Like oh my god, like I you know after three albums, I did other stuff uh -huh. and you know definitely had some weeks of just chilling out hard, yeah. doing absolutely nothing. So well, dude, that's all important. I think uh, for any artist is to live their life before they kind of go in and write music that possibly reflects what that, that right. life yeah, yeah. could be. So taking a little breather is not too crazy. Six years is a long time, but... Uh, it's a, Yeah, it's a pretty long time. Five, well, and it's really... Right now we're at like five and a half. Yeah. Maybe we'll get the album out just under <laughs> six years. But yeah, I know it, it's, it's on the long side, but I'm kind of like... Actually, I think like four to five years is like a really nice chunk of time because mm -hmm. it's like... That, to me, that's the unit that you think of life in a little bit. You know, like even when you're like a kid, like... High school is four years. Yep. College is four years. And then you know the rest of your life. It's kind of like four or five years. That seems like a two. Like it's you know especially now two years. That, yeah. That feels like a day. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And it's not like you're coming with uh, ten two minute songs. This is a big album. Eighteen songs. Are yeah. we Are we prepared? I think on the Instagram post they called it a double album. Is it a double album? To me, I think of it as a double album. Yeah. But there's also this funny thing. Like I'm. I feel like a little bit in between generations. You mm -hmm. know, like for for me and. The band, we're right at that generation that was like a little bit of CD store, a lot of downloading, mm -hmm. and then streaming. So we're like right in between, like, uh, you know, we're kind of on the older side of millennials. So I'm mean, right in this place where I'm like, because I'm just like such a music fan, I look back at records like Bruce Springsteen, The River, or Fleetwood Mac, Tusk, Exile on Main Street, and I'm just like, these are like double albums. That's a meaningful moment when an artist makes sure. their double album. Yeah. But then at the same time, I'm like anybody, I listen to new music and stuff, and I'm just like 18, 18 songs, that's just like a regular album. Yeah. For uh, for some, it's even a short album for some people, yeah. so I'm kind of like, you know, I have to be a little bit like, call it what you want. Everything fits, though, you, you said. It's not like everything's forced together, things are not pulled from side to side, everything kind of comes together as a cohesive Totally, unit. I mean, and actually, I, I really worked hard to get it down to 18 songs, because there was like a 23 song version, that might have had a little bit of fat. Wow. <laughs> but I truly I truly feel like the 18 song album is kind of like perfect. And in some ways it all adds up. Like like you said, being gone all these years, I just couldn't wrap my head around 
I wouldn't have wanted to like give the fans a ten song album, mm-hmm. even a really good one. Yeah. And that's not what creatively it was moving towards anyway. So it, it all it all makes sense. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, Harmony Hall is the name of the first song that we're getting from the album. We've already gotten two hours of it. Or you, you, oh, led, yeah. you led with two hours right. of, of the guitar loop, and uh, now we're going from there. What can you tell us about Harmony Hall? I mean, Harmony Hall is one of those songs that has deep roots. Um, you know, Vampire Weekend fans might recognize a little shared DNA lyrically with some other things I've done. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those songs that kind of started with a piano part that, like, bump. It's Baroque part that happens in the middle. And then that part developed for a long time. I was always playing it on piano, trying different ways to play it. And then years later, I wrote the guitar riff. And then finally it came together and felt like a song. Mm-hmm. That's just sometimes what happens. It's like you have these ideas, they're not ready to be a whole song, and then finally, the, you know, the... The verse meets the chorus, and then you're off to the races, you know? Yeah. You have spent a bunch of time over the last couple of years, again, like you said, yeah. doing other things. One of those things was you helped write a song for the Beyonce record. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did Hold up. she return the favor for this album? Oh, you know what? I didn't ask her. That's a big mistake. Now, now that... <laughs> <laughs> it's like a missed opportunity. I should have... Man, I should have asked her. Ain't that always a case you know, and You know, it's also, it's like, I've had this experience, too, where uh-huh. sometimes when you're around really famous people, you know, once somebody gave me some advice, like even if you go to some party at some really famous person's house and you're mm-hmm. a plus one, you should go introduce yourself to the host. And I was like, no, they don't want to be bothered. And somebody's like, they're just people too. Sure. And you know, somebody like Beyonce, who's a very accomplished songwriter, producer yeah. in her own land, how often does somebody hit her up and say, hey, you want to write? Yeah. Everybody I, thinks she's too busy. That's maybe, a good idea. Maybe she's just waiting to get asked. Yeah, you know, you got to ask people. You got to <laughs> treat people like people. I did not ask her. But that's a great idea. Uh, are there any other <laughs> collaborations on the album? Did you ask any? Did you ask anybody? And does anybody show yeah, up? There's a bunch, like yeah. on, on this album, and I think it kind of helps us earn the 18 minutes. By uh, sorry, the 18 songs. Sure. By bringing more people in, there's uh, I mean there's a whole crew of producers, but a, p- almost every producer basically worked on a few songs. So mm-hmm. everybody's kind of part of the fabric of the album, whether it's. Ariel produced most of it. Of course, Rustam is involved. Um, DJ Dahi, Blood Pop, Steve Lacey's on multiple songs. And then there's a few other guests that I, uh, I want people to discover. Sure, yeah, it'll yeah. be a surprise. Will you explain, I don't know if I've seen this, yeah. and, and as a fan following on social right. media, I've seen uh, the relationship with Seinfeld 2000. Oh, well, Seinfeld 2000 is basically, at this point, my personal social media manager. Okay. Se- Seinfeld, as we call him, is a very mysterious guy. Uh-huh. He comes from Canada. Mm-hmm. He's in Japan at the moment. But he um, he kind of started out, he, he has a social media account called Seinfeld 2000 for people who don't know, that kind of started where he was making fun of other Seinfeld accounts. This is how inside baseball this is, is that he is like a, a secondary Seinfeld meme account. And then after, he, he and I kind of had, had like a Twitter friendship. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing a radio show. And at some point he would call in. And then at some point he just became part of the show. Yeah. And I kind of hired him for the show. And then he started to become the social media manager for the radio show. And then when Vampire Weekend time rolled around, you know, like I was saying, I like, I like having a little community of creative people, mm-hmm. whether it's musicians, producers, or even people who make memes. Of course. So then it's like, well, Vampire Weekend, now everybody's like, well, you guys got to get your Instagram popping again. And I'm like, whoa, I mean... That, that shit's been dormant. <laughs> yeah, what do we years. do? Yeah. So then I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm not just gonna, you know, go call anybody. So I called uh-huh. Seinfeld 2000. He specialized in Seinfeld memes, yeah. and that definitely confused a few Vampire Weekend fans. But you know, now. It helped, he got our numbers up a little bit. I will tell you this. Yeah. From the outside looking in, it was so fun to watch. And oh, it was my wife who noticed it at the beginning. She's like, what is going on with Vampire Weekend? Because we both follow Seinfeld 2000. Right. And it was just, it was a fun marriage to watch. It's, uh, uh, it's fun to hear exactly what that relationship is. Yeah, and he's always going to be a part of the, the campaign. He's my guy. Good. <laughs> good, 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 good. Um, since the last time you released a record, a lot has happened in this world. A lot has yes. changed. And you can take that any way you want to take it. How much of that makes its way into the music, whether or not it's a personal thing for mm. you, whether or not it's things happening in the globe? Well, it can't help but of course, but make its way in at some point. But, you know, it's funny. Like I was talking to somebody recently, and they were like, yo, now this album's coming out, uh, Trump era, you're, you know, the last time you put a record was like Obama's second term. It's so different. Mm-hmm. And then I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know what's crazy, though? Our first album came out and George Bush was president. There you go. So the... Uh, Obviously, there's some particularly intense things happening now, but the 
there, there's some nature of like politics and the world and how it makes you feel, the personal, the macro, that's always played a part in the music. So, you know, and also this record, it, it's not like I wrote it all in the past six months or anything. Uh -huh. So, you know, it, it's interesting. There, there's probably some things that, there's words I may have written four years ago that people might listen to that has a new resonance now uh -huh. because of something that's happening in the world. But it's, it's kind of like a mix of, you know, the past four years all put together. Sure, 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 sure. Ezra, we've been waiting a long time for Father of the Bride. <laughs> uh, is there a specific date that we can say? Do we know when it's coming? I don't know if we pinned it. No, we don't. No, there, okay. we, we haven't pinned it down exactly. Sure. But I will say, like, the general plan is that we're going to keep doing these jobs of two songs every month. So mm -hmm. roughly in three months, you know, if it become if it's two in months and three, three quarters or three and a half months, you know, it, it, don't get mad, but you know, that, that's roughly. It's Long spring. story short, uh, we're going to get a steady stream of new Vampire Weekend music oh, yeah. over the next that's, that's couple of weeks. That's all locked and loaded. Uh, yeah. Starting today, 2021 yep. and Harmony Hall. That's right. Uh, thank you. Thanks for being here. Dude, it's Thank exciting. You. It's a good day for yeah, you. Yeah, no, I feel good. Absolutely. It's Ezra Koenig from Vampire Weekend. Again, the new record, FOTB, Father of the Bride, right. uh, will be out at some point this year.